Welcome to the French Dream Man channel. I'm your host, Robert Sherwood. We were contracted by the Brown Iron Brew House to build a channel drain and an outdoor sump pump system that could hold up to a thunderstorm. The restaurant would flood every time there was a decent storm because somebody put an indoor sump pump pit for an outdoor system. Also, they used a two inch micro drain because they were more worried about aesthetics. And they were worried about the function. So we replaced this indoor sump pump basin with an outdoor system. We're going to show you that. Here it is when that two inch micro drain was in. You can see it running across. When it couldn't keep up with the rain and that indoor sump pump pit couldn't take in any more water, it would then flood the inside of the restaurant. Now you can see that they've been struggling. They actually have some corrugated pipe that they were laying across the patio to connect to a downspout because that system has been overwhelmed as well. So we're going to take care of all these issues and we're going to do it in a simplistic manner. We're going to pull power from two different breakers and we're going to put in two sump pumps, but they're going to be outdoor. They're going to be outdoor sump pump basins. I'm going to show you everything so that you know how to put in a channel drain to an outdoor sump pump. Now you can see that this outdoor courtyard is huge. So how this little indoor sump pump basin was going to take care of all that surface water, all that sheet water coming off that courtyard area is beyond me. But we're going to dig a really big sump pit because we're not messing around. We're going to install one of our Screaming Demon sump systems along with one of our bad seeds. Now we are pulling power from two different breakers. We're gonna run two different plugs out there cause I want the Screaming Demon on its own breaker. We cut the cement to a downspout so that we can run the downspout, the roof runoff system underneath our channel drain. Once our roof runoff system is in place, we can then install the channel drain. The channel drain will have some re-rod and cement to hold it in place. And we're going to install our bad seed sump system with extended chamber. So you can see the channel drain is installed and we have the re-rod and the cement to hold the channel drain in place properly. We have it going to a distribution box. The green lid that you see is what's known as a distribution box. You can see we have a roof runoff pipe as well as a channel drain pipe. The men are putting in sand slag so that we could start laying the brick pavers. We're going to do a soldier border of brick pavers as it was originally done. We do have some leftover pavers because our channel drain is so much bigger than the micro drain, but we're going to use those where we cut the concrete to get to the gutter drain. Now I'm going to show you the inside of this distribution box. You can see the channel drain and the pipe to the roof runoff. Now any debris that comes off the roof or this courtyard It'll end up in that distribution box and it won't be fed through our sump pump system. Always leave your channel drain about an eighth inch below the brick surface or the cement surface. That way you'll be reassured your channel drain will catch all the water. You can see the old channel drain, that two inch micro drain is really, really small compared to the big four inch channel drain that we're installing. Now we're going to run the discharge lines directly to the storm drain. You're going to get a good look at our Screaming Demon sump system next to our Bad Seed outdoor sump system with extended chamber length. The phase one will be the Screaming Demon because it has a low sump. The pump will sit lower than the pump that's in the Bad Seed. So we got a phase one and then a phase two that'll come on if the first pump can't keep up. Here's another look at those two systems side by side. We're putting separate breakers, two separate circuits, so that we have each unit independent on its own breaker. If something gets thrown, we'll still have a pump. Now the men are using polymeric sand. They're using polymeric sand in all of the brick joints. This is a glue sand. It has a binding agent in it, so we don't have to worry about the sand washing out. 
Now we're going to fill this entire sump pit with round rock and it's going to be inch and a half in diameter. This is going to give us plenty of void. If there is a storm and there is a power outage, this restaurant does not have a backup generator. So I want to make sure we have a big enough sump pit with enough void in between the stone with added chamber on the outdoor sump pump system so that it can have on site storage of water in the event of a power outage. And you can see the guys are sweeping in all of that polymeric sand. I should mention that these outdoor sump pump systems are made out of dual wall culvert pipe. This is a material that's meant for high traffic, vehicle traffic, and we're building these outdoor sump pump systems out of it, custom fabricated. Now, once all the sand is in all of the brick joints, we're going to have to spray it with a garden hose so that the sand can set up. It has a binding agent in it, but it needs to be watered down for that binding agent to activate. The men are going to remove all the excess sand. You want to have everything perfect when it comes time to water in that sand. So here it is. We got the roof gutter drain tied in underneath this channel drain. We have all the sand swept. You can see there's tape on that channel drain. All the brick pavers have been cut in, fit perfect. You can see the brick pavers that we use to replace the slab of cement here that we cut out to get to that gutter drain. Now Francisco's watering in all that polymeric sand. He's going to activate the binding agent, that glue agent that's in that sand. Make sure that you lightly water in this polymeric sand. You don't want to dilute the glue, the binding agent that's in the polymeric sand. So just a light watering. I would even recommend doing it really light and then let it dry and then do it really light one more time and that's it. Then you can go ahead once you're done setting in that polymeric sand, you can remove the tape from the grate of the channel drain. You can see the channel drain is recessed an eighth inch lower than the brick pavers. So the water falls in the channel drain. We want to catch all the water. Now we're going to take our two discharge lines and we're going to tie them into the sidewall of the storm drain catch basin out in front of the restaurant. If you have any additional questions about this installation, leave them in the comments section. And if you found any of this information helpful, please give us a thumbs up. It supports the channel. If there's a video you want me to make, leave that suggestion in the comments section. I'm your host, Robert Sherwood. And until that next video.